Welcome to the Central Church of Christ and thank you so much for joining us for our online services today. I hope and I pray that what is said and what is done will first of all be uplifting to God, that we will praise God in a way that is pleasing to Him, but also that you'll be encouraged and you'll be uplifted and most of all you'll have something to feed on spiritually. You know, we at the Central Church, we're about three things really, loving God, loving others, and making disciples. We want to focus on those three things. We don't claim to be a perfect people, but we do serve a perfect God. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to know more about who we are, we invite you uh, to call us. We invite you to go online to our website at centralcocfamily.com where you can learn more about us. Again, thank you all so much. Hello, Central family from Paul and Penny and Allison and Kayla and Andrew and Kyle. We miss you guys and hope to see you soon. Hello. Hello, Central family. The Cowley family sure does miss seeing you all. I miss seeing my friends. Hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. Bye. Hey, Central family, we miss you. Those of you that are a part of our family here at Central, just a, a few housekeeping things uh, to make you aware of, to remind you of uh, before we get into our services uh, today. Uh, number one, we want to remind you that we're still waiting on those all-in-one communion kits uh, that have been ordered. And again, as soon as they come in, we'll be sure to let you know. Again, please mail your contribution in at this time. We are uh, continuing to work on the online giving and we are Hopefully going to have that ready soon for you to, to have that option available if that's what you choose to do. Um, but if you don't want to mail your contribution in, if you want to drop it off, we invite you to do that on Mondays from 9 to 3. Again, that's the one day a week that our offices are open uh, right now. Again, Jenny is still answering the phones at home, so if you do need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to the office. And also, uh, feel free to reach out to one of our shepherds or myself, and we'll do what we can to help you. Uh, as you know, uh, recently the tornadoes have affected our area and the, and the Hamilton County area and surrounding areas. Um, I, I want to say thank you to all of those that came up here and we met at the building and were able to get out and to help those that are part of our family and, and others as well in the community to clean up and to cut up trees. We had a, a great time doing that. We still practiced our social distance, but we were able to help those in need. Uh, there have been so many that have asked, you know, are we going to take up donations? And we want to say yes. We want, if you would like to, do, to donate uh, to a tornado relief effort, uh, please mail your check and make sure you mark it for that. Or you can bring it to the building again on Monday uh, from 9 to 3. And if you have any questions about that, again, you can call uh, our church office and we'll be able to help you. And then lastly, uh, Central Connect, uh, we have received enough donations. Thank you so much for, every day, for everyone that's donated to this cause. Uh, but we do feed the um, emergency shelter here in Cleveland at the end of every month. Uh, but Kevin and Dana uh, have received enough to prepare the meals for April and May. And then again, when it comes to June, we uh, will, of course, reevaluate um, at that time. But again, thank you, for everyone. thank you to everyone who has helped out and who has contributed uh, to that great effort. That's all for the announcements today. I hope that and pray that you will once again engage uh, your, your mind and your heart uh, and your body as we begin to worship our God. We want you to sing along uh, with the songs that are being led. We want you to pray with us. We want you to go ahead and get your copy of God's Word out so we can dive into God's Word uh, together today. And our scripture reading today uh, in just a moment will come from Romans chapter 8. So you can go ahead and get those Bibles ready. But again... For everyone watching, thank you so much for joining us for our online worship services today.
morning, Central Family. At this time, we would like to go over our prayer list. And the first one on our list is a congratulations to Corey and Sarah Dobbs on the birth of their baby girl, Aria. She was born Wednesday morning and weighed six pounds and five ounces and was 19 inches long. Mom and baby are doing great. Congratulations also to the proud great-grandparents of Carol and Carol June. Uh, Sudhir and uh, Janie Menderada request prayers for their son and daughter-in-law, Sudev Menderada and Adrian Strickland, as they are working the front lines of COVID-19 in our Chattanooga hospitals. Uh, our prayers are all also with those in our community that suffered from loss and damage with the tornado last Sunday. Cheryl Landolt had extensive property damage from the tornado in Cleveland. Tilly Merritt's daughter and son-in-law, Michael and Nikki Stewart, suffered loss of their home in the Holly Hills subdivision in East Brainerd. Lee and Marlene Reichard's daughter and son-in-law, Kevin and Lisa McDowd, also suffered loss of home in the Holly Hills subdivision at East Brainerd. And also Troy Goins, mom's house, was damaged. And he also has some family members right now that are uh, suffering from various health issues. Our deepest sympathy is extended to Shelley Morrow, <clears throat> her sisters and family on the passing of her father, Dean Heron. A private family funeral service was held on Friday. Our sympathy is also extended to Keith Welder on the passing of his brother-in-law in Virginia last Friday. Prayers are requested for Fred and Wanda Davis and family as they have made the dif difficult decision to stop Fred's treatment and have called in hospice care. Eric and Jennifer Cavett's 15-month-old son recently suffered seizures and a stroke. He required a second surgery this past Tuesday to drain fluid from his brain. And as of Thursday of last week, uh, there's some good news. Uh, he's made some uh, great improvements, and he is now off the ventilator and is beginning to wake up. They are giving his me him medicine that seems to be working. And the even better news is, is that Eric, Eric and Jennifer have been able to hold him, and that's really great. Uh, please continue praying for them. And certainly we want to remember our members at Central that are undergoing uh, treatment for cancer. Uh, Carol Long, she had a chemo treatment on Wednesday. And Betty Young hopes to start radiation soon. And we want to continue remembering Family and friends in our community that are undergoing treatment for cancer, Olivia Weatherford, Mason Cobble, Grayson Moser, Steve Newport, Sue Kinney, Brian Sims, Heather Robertson, Mickle Price, and Rachel Flowers. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this day that you've blessed us with. Father, we're thankful for this time that we can come and uh, bring these uh, names before you. Father, there are uh, many folks that are suffering uh, due to sickness, due to cancer, and, and just all kinds of illnesses. Father, we pray that you would be with them, heal them, Father. Uh, we just want to say a special prayer for uh, the Davis family with Fred. Father, we pray that you would uh, be with them, comfort them, Father. Uh, we pray, Father, for all those that have uh, had damage in the storms. We pray that you would help them, Father, to be able to rebuild soon. Uh, be with any uh, families, Father, that have lost loved ones in that storm. Uh, we pray that you'd bless them as well. Uh, Father, be with all uh, our family members uh, that are undergoing cancer treatments, Father. Uh, we just pray that you'd bless them and comfort them, Father, uh, during the times that they struggle. Uh, be with them to have the strength to get through those treatments, Father. Uh, be with their family members that are doing such a wonderful job of uh, trying to take care of them. Father, we know that there are many that are not on this list of our number that may be uh, under the weather or having other types of uh, problems right now in their lives. They may be having uh, some depression or some other mental anxieties, Father. I pray that you'd uh, be with them, give them strength, Father. Uh, help them to lean on you at this time. Lean on your word. Uh, Father, we are so thankful for those that we uh, pray for uh, on a weekly basis. And, and they start feeling better, Father. And, and they are able to uh, be back home. And we just pray that you would continue to 
uh, bless them as well. Uh, thank you, Father, so much for uh, your son, Jesus. Uh, thank you for his sacrifice on the cross for us. Help us, Father, to be more like him and help us to be a better servants for you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship
I'll be reading from Romans 8, 28 through 30. Romans 8, 28 through 30. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also pre predestined to become confirmed, conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. Let us pray. Our God, our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the life that you have given us, the beauties of your creation, our family that you have given us, the Central Church of Christ that we're still able to come together through technology. Um, thank you for your Jesus, um, for Jesus coming down and, and sacrificing himself for our sins. Please be with all of those who are affected by COVID-19, the sickness, and all of those who um, are sick and lonely during these times, the doctors and nurses, and the first responders, all of those that, who continue to work and help be with the affected by the recent storms and tornadoes. Please continue to be with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the most famous sayings is, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. We've probably used that saying ourselves many times. We've heard other people use that saying. Uh, when, when life you know, is, a, is difficult or you're in a difficult situation, uh, truth is, I like lemons. Uh, I, I like putting lemon on, on grilled fish, lemon in my tea, lemon in my water. Now, I'm not just going to take a lemon and peel it like an orange and eat it. I'm not going to do that unless... I'm giving it to a little kid, and you probably know what I'm talking about. Well, I think we've all done it as parents. You give the kid the little slice of lemon just to kind of see the reaction. But we don't eat lemons by themselves because they're too sour. But take some lemon juice by itself, put in some sugar and some water and some ice cubes, and you're creating something very good, right? A nice, refreshing glass of lemonade. But the reality is, behind the saying is true. Life really does hand us lemons. At one time or another, many times in our lives, we are going to receive lemons. 
And that's because ever since the Garden of Eden, the sin in the Garden, we have been separated from a perfect world. And so since that time, there's always been sin. There's always been tension. There's always been conflict. There's always, uh, there's always been life. You know how life is. Life sometimes seems to be difficult. And again, all of this stems back to what happened in the garden, being separated from a perfect world. But the good news in all of this, the good news is that because of the love of God, while we may live in a fallen world, we serve a risen Savior, do we not? We serve a risen Savior who has overcome the world. He has risen to live forever, and we can too because of Him. But again, the reality is sometimes we do receive lemons in life. Sometimes it's a truck full. It's so many that we don't know how in the world we're going to make it through it and bear through it. And sometimes it's like someone just walks up and hands you one lemon. You know, maybe it's not the greatest tragedy in the world. It's not the greatest tragedy you have faced. But nonetheless, it is a tragedy in your life. It is a difficult circumstance in your life. So, but here's the thing. Whether you receive a truckload of lemons or one lemon, it's still the same. Lemons are sour. Lemons are distasteful by themselves. And so when those times in our lives come, we can do one of two things. The first thing we can do is we can try and endure it. Now what often happens in the troubles of life when we're, um, we're stressed, maybe emotionally, physically, spiritually, and usually what comes up out of that stress, what comes up from those difficult situations you know, when we're trying to endure it, is, is anger and, and bitterness and resentment. Just trying to endure what you're going through, just, you know, ignoring it, you know, hoping maybe that it'll go away soon. It's like, you know, you know that, that squeeze of fresh lemon juice in your mouth and just the sourness of it. You know how you, like, you know, imagine those little kids you used to give it to, that son or that daughter, and you watch their face and they would just cringe and just... Oh, you know, just grit their teeth and maybe clench their fist and eventually hoping that it's going to go away soon. But when we face the difficulties of life that way, just trying to endure it, what often happens is this, it just really leads us to even more frustration, even more difficulty. Now, if, if we're honest, people often, they take this route first. Let's try and figure it out on our own. Let's try and make sense of what is happening in our lives. Because often when that difficulty comes, when something bad happens, we want an explanation. Why did this happen? Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to so-and-so? Why did it happen to my family? And so we can't help but begin to search for meanings when life gives us those lemons. And when we can't find the answer, and when God isn't answering us uh, the way that we want and as fast as we want, what seems to happen is we come up with our own answers. And if you're like me, the answer you're going to come up with isn't the right one. And it isn't a good one. And if we aren't careful, the bad answers that we come up with and that we put into our minds can actually, again, cause us more pain than what we are already experiencing or already going through. So the first way we can handle those lemons is to endure it. The second way we can kind of handle those lemons is we can look for the good in it. So, but is that going to be easy? No, it's not. We need to say that first of all. Looking for the good in any difficult circumstance is, I don't believe, is ever easy. At least it hasn't been in my life. But one of the many, many promises of God, a very well-known verse uh, that was read for us a moment ago. Romans 8, 28. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. I want you to look at what Paul said. Paul said, we know. There's no doubt. There's no surprises. God isn't surprised by what's happening in your life. God's not going, uh-oh, or God's not going, oops, I didn't expect that to happen. That's not, what, that's not what God is doing, okay? God says, or Paul says that we know. We know. 
that God causes all things, not some things, not the good things, not the bad things, but all things, the things that you're going through right now in your life, those difficult things that you are facing, all things, God causes all things to work together for good. It's hard to see the good, though. It's hard to see the good sometimes. So what does God mean? What does it mean when Paul says God causes all things to work together for good? Because, you know, God, what I'm going through right now isn't good. What I've seen lately happening isn't good. How, what, what do you mean? Well, if you skip forward, so what was read was 28 through 30 in our scripture reading. But at the end of verse 30, God ultimately says he wants his children to be glorified in heaven. So anything that you go through, God is using it to prepare you to go to heaven. And that's the good. That really makes anything that we go through good when he's using it to prepare us for heaven. So even though we may not see it, we can depend on the promises of God that he is using it for our good. Again, this is what he talks about in verse 9. He talks about how we're being conformed to the image of his son. So this is what that looks like. Was everything Jesus went through good in our eyes? Absolutely not. But did God use it for good? Yes. And so that is what God is doing in our life. He's using all things to work together for good. To, to conform us to the image of his son. To prepare us for eternity. So the question is, what do you do when life gives you lemons? Do you endure? Do you look for the good? And Paul says, if you love God and if you let God, that he will use it for good. Okay, so consider the story real quick of Joseph. So Joseph was just one among many in the Bible whose life embodied disappointment. He was, uh, you know, this is in Genesis 37. He was despised by his brothers and thrown into slavery or sold into slavery. Uh, he was misunderstood. He was falsely accused for following God's law. That's Genesis 39. He was a stranger in a foreign land with no family to call his own. Yet he was finally vindicated before his brothers. And he demonstrated extremely great trust. Not in his own ability to make something out of a bad situation. But in the God who meant every disappointment in his life for good. That's Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Joseph understood that, hey, God has been working all along in my life, all the bad things, even all the good things. God has been there all along working those things. You see, what we often try to do, again, is we try to make our own good out of a bad situation. We try to come up with our own answers. But the promises of God, the promise of God, is that he will do, he will take the bad, excuse me, and he will use it for good. Again, it, it's not that, that God is making the best of it when things don't go our way. He doesn't just sweep it and kind of sweep all the pieces up and uh, pick up the pieces after our best laid plans have fallen apart, you know, after what we thought we thought was best, after it falls apart and falls on the floor. God doesn't just sweep it up and, uh, you know, God is always working. Even in our disappointments and he's using those trials that we go through for a greater purpose. So we don't deal with disappointing circumstances by, you know, picking ourselves up by our bootstraps or turning our frown upside down. Rather, we trust in God. We trust in the God who is always working things out for the good. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Let me share with you three things real quick. Three things real quick that I believe will kind of give you some hope. Um, as you go through life and as lemons come into your life. Number one, learn to be intentional with your prayer life. So something that is done intentionally is done on purpose, right? Okay, it is an accident. It's, it's not just a routine that you go through. It isn't, let me try to fit this thing into my schedule. Uh, it, it's, it's purposeful. It's, it's taking aim and it's hitting the target because that's what you're meaning to do is to hit the target. So in other words, an intentional prayer is more of a specific prayer. It is designed with a purpose in mind. So we're not talking about the, the prayer, you know, the prayer when you wake up or the prayer before a meal or maybe the, the prayer before you go to bed at night. It's the, you know, we're not talking about the, you know, forgive me my sins, heal the sick or, you know, bless this food, the nourishment of, of my body. 
Uh, we're not talking about those type prayers. Those are very generic, and that's, you know what I mean. Sometimes we tend to say the same things over and over again in our prayers. It's more of a, a routine, and we're saying it without even really knowing it. What I'm talking about here is different than that. Now, I think some of the hardest prayers we can ever pray are intentional prayers because they are they're detailed, and they're often full of emotion. They are specific. It's those prayers that we pray in the midst of tragedy. I mean, you can look in Luke 11 and Luke 18, and you can see some of the specific prayers and how intentional and how, again, specific that they were. And so what I want to encourage you to do is to slow down during the day sometimes and, and take notice of the opportunities, uh, of the moments where you can stand with arms, you know, maybe they're stretched out towards heaven, or, or maybe it's all you can do to just go to your knees and beg God and pray to God and praise Him for what He has done for you, praising God for being God. You know, when it comes to intentional prayers, it's not always the easiest thing to do. You know, when you're, I've learned this week, when you're standing and you're, you're looking at the damage that is done by a tornado and the lives that have been turned upside down, when you're, you know, cooped up, at your home because you've lost your job because of the pandemic and everything else going on, when you've you know, maybe lost a loved one recently or maybe you're watching a loved one and they're suffering and you know that they're dying and they're preparing to leave this earth. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to be excited about prayer during those times. It's difficult to be intentional in your prayer life in those times. But that's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to open our hearts, to open our minds, to, to pour out our hearts to Him. In the time of crisis, it is our chance to really show our faith and to show our dependence on Him. So number one, we need to be more intentional in our prayers. Number two, we need to learn to trust God more in our circumstances. And not just that, but allow God to work through us. So if you remember, where were some of Paul's letters written from? Prison, right? The prison epistles. Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, the book of Philemon. In fact, when Paul was writing uh, to the church at uh, Philippi, he writes about how they shouldn't be worried, they shouldn't be anxious. And again, he's writing this from prison. In fact, look at what he said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. He says that God works through his people. Now I want you to understand this. God isn't looking for perfect people to work through. That's often what we think, that God only works through perfect people. That is not a biblical doctrine. We, we don't see that anywhere in the Bible. But what God does work through, the people he does work through, are those that will allow him to work through them. He's looking for that type of people, those that will allow him to work through them. And then if you go down to verse 12, Paul says, really, that's exactly what's happened to me. You know, Paul wasn't, Paul was anything but perfect, but Paul allowed God to work through him. And so he says that God worked through him in the difficult situations of his life because he trusted God in his life that whatever happened to him would turn out for the good. Because he says in verse 12, all of my circumstances, and again, he's talking about shipwrecks, stonings, beatings, mockings, all of these things have actually served to advance the gospel. They have served to advance the gospel. Listen, Paul had a lot of lemons delivered to him in his life. But instead of, instead of Paul focusing on that problem, instead of Paul focusing his mind and his heart on the difficulties, Paul focused his heart and his mind on the victories that God was preparing him for. And number three, allow the lemon moments, we'll call them lemon moments, to bring you closer to God. So again, when you look at Romans 8, 28 through 30, and 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 7, you understand and you come to understand that you know, our trials in life are there to help us to reach the goal, as we said earlier, to reach the goal of becoming more and more and more like Jesus. They build our faith. It's the process of sanctification. It's the godly character that is developing within us through the Spirit of God. It is this building up that enables us to rejoice in sufferings. Listen to Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Paul says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, 
Endurance produces character and character produces hope. And he says hope does not put us to shame because God's love, listen to this, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So while we may not see it right now, the difficulties, the the trials in life, those moments that bring us to our knees, the moments that just, you know, that cause us so much heartache, they come with a purpose. And they come with a reward. I want to read one more verse. James chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. And then we'll read verse 12 of James 1. Uh, This is, again, a very familiar passage of Scripture. But it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be able to be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Verse 12 of James 1. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know, life certainly does hand us lemons often. But what we will find in life and what you will find in life through experiences is that we need more than just sweet lemonade to replace the sourness of circumstantial lemons. Every disappointing day, every disappointment in life simply ought to remind us that this world is not our home. This is not our eternal dwelling place. When the, when the days don't go our way, when we are longing for a better life where you know, there are no more tears, no more disappointments, no more sorrow, no more suffering. A life where the God who, who faithfully promised to keep us to the end, who faithfully promised to give us a crown of life, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, a God that has promised to wipe away every tear of disappointment away forever. That right there is so much better. It's way better than the best lemonade you could ever have. So today, let us praise God, let us worship God, and let us thank God for being a God who can take every situation in life and He can use it and make good out of it. But again, He only does that to those that love Him, to those that are called according to His purpose. So I want to ask you today, do you really love God? Do you serve God? Do you long to be with God? I hope that you'll consider that. I hope, I hope that you'll think about that as we go into uh, the next song. And I do al- always want to encourage you, if you need the prayers of this church, if you need someone to talk to, we encourage you to reach out uh, to, our, to our church office. You can reach out to myself or one of our shepherds. And again, as always, if your desire is to become a child of God through the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of your sins, I pray again. Uh, We're not going to allow this pandemic or really anything to stop uh, prayer. We're not going to allow it uh, to stop uh, you wanting to be baptized. And so if that's the case, again, I hope that you'll reach out to us and we can make the proper arrangements. Thank you all so much.
At this time, we want to take an opportunity to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and participate in partaking of the Lord's Supper. Just want you to think about some simple words that Jesus said. It's recording in, in Luke 22 and also in 1 Corinthians 11. Jesus uh, gave the simple words, This do in remembrance of me. Think about these words and what all that encompasses in the life of Jesus as we partake. Let's have a prayer for the bread at this time. Dear Father, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for the opportunity that we have to partake of the Lord's Supper. Father, we're thankful for what it does to remind us of the great love that you had for us and the great love that Jesus had for us and his willingness to offer himself as a sacrifice for us. Father, we pray that you will be with those that partake of this bread, pray that you will help them to concentrate on the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's have a prayer for the uh, fruit of the vine. Father, at this time we're mindful of this cup which represents the blood of Jesus. We know that it's the blood that stained the old rugged cross. And it's the blood that cleanses us of our sins and gives us the hope of eternal life with you. Father, we pray that you will help us to think about Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection. And help us all to look forward to the time of our resurrection and where we can live eternally with you. Help everyone to partake of this cup in a manner that's pleasing to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
good morning, Central. We hope you've enjoyed the preceding service, that it was something you needed to hear. We trust that you are watching this and uh, it's helping you out. Right now it's time to do the closing prayer. So bow with me, please. Father, we thank you for this day that you've granted us. We ask that you would be with us in all that we're doing, Lord, for the recent tornado victims and all these virus victims and everything going on, Lord. We'd ask you to be with, with them and their families and that things could proceed along the cleanup and that the members of, of our congregation that were affected, Lord, we'd ask you to be with them and their families. Lord, just now we would ask you to be with us as we conclude this service, that it would be it was something that we all needed to hear, and that we're hoping that very soon we'll be able to get back together in the building and see each other as we enjoy seeing folks. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Go with us the rest of this day and week. This prayer I ask in your son's name. Amen.